All right, what's up? This your boy Yash Chosen One. Hey, I ain't seen you guys in about three or four days. Uh, it's been a little busy, but um, you know, always time to get in with you know, in with y'all. So we're gonna continue in uh, the Book of Joshua on chapter seventy-nine. Um, we left off with uh, you know, uh, the Most High was telling Moses and his brother Aaron. To perform some signs and um, you know now they're they're in front of Pharaoh and uh, some things about to go down so all right here we go uh, book of Joshua chapter 79 verse 36 and Aaron hastened and threw the rod out out of his hand before Pharaoh and before his servants and the rod turned into a serpent <clears throat> And the sorcerers saw this, and they cast each man his rod upon the ground, and they, and they became serpents. And the serpents of Aaron's rod lifted up his head and opened his mouth to swallow the rods of the magicians. So this rod, like I said, had these powers, and we already discussed where the rod came from in the first place. It wasn't any, it just wasn't any kind of stick he just picked up off the ground. You know, it, it had powers anyway. But we can read about this in Exodus chapter 7, verse 10 through 12. And uh, <clears throat> we know who the magicians are now. In the Bible. It was uh, Balaam and uh, his brothers, or his sons, I believe. It was Balaam and his sons. So, you know, now we know who the magicians are and, you know, that they did have some, <clears throat> that they were high in the sorcery and stuff like that. And Balaam, the magician, answered and said, The thing has been from the days of old that a serpent should swallow his fellow and that living things devour each other. So they're trying to play it off like, you know, Moses' rod. It's just nothing, man. It's just a trick. Now, therefore, restore it to a rod as it was at first, and we will also restore our rods as they were at first. And if thy rod shall swallow our rods, then shall we know that the Spirit of the Almighty is in thee. And if not... Thou art only an artificer, like unto ourselves. And Aaron hastened and stretched forth his hand and caught hold of the serpent's tail, and it became a rod in his hand. And the sorcerers did the like with their rods, and they got hold, each man of the tail of his serpent, and they became rods as, as at first. Well, this is sorcery. It's like magicians, but this is like big time, you know, sorcery. It ain't like any mirrors and stuff like that man they were doing this man he was deep into the cult and when they were restored to rods the rod of Aaron swallowed up their rods and when the king saw this thing he ordered the book of records that related to the kings of Egypt to be brought and they brought the book of records the chronicles of the kings of Egypt in which all the idols of Egypt were inscribed for they thought of finding therein the name of Yah, but they found it not because remember, even before, uh, before Moses, like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he never came to a Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as Yah. He always came to them as uh, Elohim or something like that, but he never came to them as Yah. And Pharaoh said to Moshe and Aaron, Behold, I have not found the name of your power written in this book, and his name I know not. Nobody knew it. He just related it to Mo Moshe, so nobody knew the name. They know they knew of him, but they never knew the name. And the counselors and wise men answered the king, "We have heard that the power of the Hebrews is a son of the wise, the son of ancient kings." And Pharaoh turned to Moshe and Aaron and said to them, "I know not Yah whom you have declared; neither will I send his people." And they answered and said to the king, Yah, the power of powers, is his name. And he proclaimed his name over us from the days of our ancestors and sent us, saying, Go to Pharaoh and say unto him, Send my people that they may serve me. Now therefore send us that we may take a journey for three days in the wilderness and there may sacrifice to him. For from the days of our going down to Egypt, he has not taken from our hands either burnt offering oblation or sacrifice and if thou wilt, wilt not send us his anger will be kindled against thee and he will smite Egypt either with the plague or with sword 
you know, you get to think about, you know, the most high and who he is and, you know, all you have to do is just read the book, man. He wants these sacrifices, man. He wants you to show him reverence. He wants you, you know, in the Bible it says fear Yah, but that's my, that's more like a reverence to Yah. Fear is it's a mis, kind of a mistranslated word. It's more of a reverence to him. So he wants the glory, you know, and why shouldn't he get it, man? He's the creator of all. He's giving you things. It's things that he's giving you. You don't own anything, man. You may work hard to get things, but you don't own anything. Everything is his. You can't take anything to the grave with you, man. Everything is his. And that's what he requires. You know, so don't be listening to any Christian who said God is love. No, nah, man, God is a fury. He's wrathful. He is love. He has love. He's patient. Everything that you have as far as your emotions, all your abstract, all your abstract, uh, you know, characteristics of yourself. He has it too. Remember, you're made in his image. So how can you discount your creator? So he's only allowed to just have love. He's not allowed to have show emotions. Yeah, think about that, man. Stop listening to everything, man. Just stop taking everything for what it's worth because, you know, for, not for what it's worth, but for what you hear, you know, really think about things yourself. And Pharaoh said to them, tell me now his power and his might. And they said to him, he created the heaven and the earth, the seas and all their fish. He formed the light, created the darkness caused rain upon the earth and watered it and made the herbage and grass to sprout. He created man and beasts and the animals of the forest, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. And by his mouth, they live and die. So that verse right there just blows away evolution and, and Scientology. You know, they say, you know, the world came as this by some big bang theory. And they say that we evolved from apes and, and stuff. What did I just say right there? He created man and beast. Isn't an ape a beast? Aren't we top of the food chain? Wasn't we put on the uh, earth to get to uh, have dominion over it? Why? Why does man have dominion over the world? Not because we ever. Not because we evolved. It's because it, it's always been that way. The beasts were put on the uh, on the planet to serve you as well. That's why Adam gave every animal a name. That's why you have every name for an animal. They weren't allowed to name themselves. We at, men name animals. Animals don't name us. And if you want to keep saying that you're from a monkey or an ape, then by all means, if you want to be an animal, be an animal. Okay. All right. Surely he created thee in thy mother's womb. And put into thee the breath of life, and reared thee, and placed thee upon the royal throne of Egypt. He even put Pharaoh as as the ruler over Egypt. It wasn't because his bloodline or his hierarchy is. That's the way he did it. And he will take that breath and soul from thee. And when you die, he's going to take your breath and your soul, which is your spirit, from you. And return thee to the ground which thou wast taken. So. What you holding here, man, this flesh body, this skin, this bone, this blood, it's all flesh. And it's going back to the to the ground that it came from. You was created from the dust of the ground. And that's why you go back. You didn't involve no monkey. We damn sure didn't create ourselves. Scientists can't explain that. They want to say we came from a, one, a single cell amoeba. And uh, come on, man. Come on, that's, that's ridiculous. And the anger of the king was kindled at their words. And he said to them, But whom amongst all the powers of nations can do this? My river is mine own, and I have it made for myself. And see, this is the arrogance of a pharaoh. He's speaking like a true pharaoh, hardening his heart. And for, as far as what Egyptians are accustomed to, they think that the sun you know, is the creator of all things. The sun made all things. Osiris, Anubis, uh, 
Isis, all that stuff. The sun makes all things. That's why they have all that sun worship in Egyptology. And that's why it clicked over to Christianity too. That's why you have Sunday worship. It's all sun worship. And he drove them from him and he ordered the labor upon Israel to be more severe than it was yesterday and before. So the Pharaoh was ticked off, you know, because he's Pharaoh who talks to me like that. And, you know, how dare he talk to me like that. And, uh, you know, let's see what happens. And Moshe and Aaron went out <clears throat> from the king's presence and they saw the children of Israel in an evil condition for the masters had made their labor exceedingly heavy. So history repeats itself, just like what, like just like our ancestors here in, in the uh, in the New World, wherever those boats were shipped to, that's the labor that they had, man. That's the it. It was hard. You see all the slave movies and everything like that, and it's it's the same thing here. It's just a different group of people had us in slavery, and this one, the Egyptians had us in slavery. Over here, it's it's the Edomites had us in slavery. And Yah said to Moshe, Behold, thou wilt see that with an outstretched hand and heavy plagues, Pharaoh will send the children of Israel, children of Israel from his land. And Moshe and Aaron dwelt amongst their brethren, the children of Israel in Egypt. So Moshe and Aaron were actually with the Israelites in Egypt. And as for the children of Israel, the Egyptians embittered their lives with the heavy work which they imposed upon them. <clears throat> so just like your days here <clears throat> in the New World, in the Americas, and wherever else we were shipped, they embittered our lives. It's the same thing, man. History just repeated itself, and it was foretold in the Bible that you know we would be in 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 that bondage for four hundred years, and it came to pass with the transatlantic slave trade, mentioned in Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty eight. All right, man. This is your boy. Yah's chosen one, so are you. If you believe in Yah, then the glory is yours and the kingdom is yours to have. As long as you believe, obey the statutes and commandments and do your best in life each and every day to please Yah and to live a prosperous life. Don't have to have material things to have a prosperous life. You live a good life by believing in the most high. You know, and he'll, you know, he'll set the stage for you having a good life. It's your boy. I'll get at you guys on uh, chapter 80. On the next one. Shalom.